Today we leave on our three week cross country expedition from Buffalo, New York, all the way to Torrance, California. And this is gonna be a really exciting one because we're gonna be basically navigating through the biggest travel network you didn't even know existed. And our first stop is to fly into the world's busiest airport. But we have quite a long journey to get there. We have six hours of flying with two fuel stops in between before we can actually make it there. Oh, it's heavy. <laughs> She's a heavy one. It's already a million degrees in here. This thing is a friggin' greenhouse. All right, let's fire up and get moving fast. Since we don't have air conditioning, remember? 2007 model. Before we start, let me bring you up to speed. We're flying our Robinson R44 helicopter, the Millennial Falcon, over 2,500 nautical miles across the country from Buffalo, New York to Torrance, California to get it rebuilt from the ground up. Last week, we planned our cross-country route, outlined some of our trip goals, and packed up the helicopter for our three-week expedition. Today, we start our journey west. Marshall County Traffic Helicopter, November 300 Whiskey Zulu is clear of 06 air taxiing to the Pops, Marshall County. We just landed at our very first fuel stop of the trip in Pennsylvania. We left Buffalo a couple of hours ago. I gotta peel my underwear off my ass crack. The first fuel stop of any trip is always exciting. After all the planning and packing, it's a relief to know that the expedition has finally begun. Tonight's destination is Hartsville, Jackson, Atlanta International Airport. With a six hour flight between Buffalo and Atlanta, we'll need to make two fuel stops along the way. We drew a line on the map and added two stops in between, one at Marshall County, and the second just happened to fall on a familiar place. Oh my goodness, hello. Bring our tile out this way and we're off. Marshall County Traffic Helicopter, November 300, Whiskey Zulu, departing from runway 06. We're doing a right downward departure to the south, Marshall County. Look at these like gorges over here. Pittsburgh Approach Helicopter, November 300, Whiskey Zulu. Helicopter Zero, Whiskey Zulu, squad 4173, Ident. 4173, Whiskey Zulu. Radar contact, 10 miles southwest of Marshall County, she had 2600, maintain via 4. Position altitude check, Zero, Whiskey Zulu. Uh, this is not looking so good, man. Can you give me a weather forecast between Los Plain and Atlanta. That's not loading. We're in the middle of nowhere right now. Oh, I have one bar of reception. We're going to Los Plain, so we'll regroup down there. I don't think we're making it to Atlanta. We're probably going to make it to Atlanta tomorrow. Los Plain traffic helicopter, November 300, Whiskey Zulu, 10 to the north. Inbound for the ramp, uh, we joining the left downwind for runway 06, full stop, on some pine. Getting soaked. Getting soaked me, so I got a wet spot on my leg. Get on some model. Oh, how the weather has very much changed. We weren't supposed to be getting any rain here, and now we're getting rain here. Uh, nipped over is far enough to get us. So we're five minutes out of Lonesome Pine Airport. This is an uncontrolled airport. Oh. Class G. So we've decided we're just gonna land there for the night and hopefully we can find a place to stay. It's gonna get dark in an hour. So while I'm okay flying through this in the daytime, I don't wanna fly through mild to moderate precipitation at night. That, that's kind of sketchy for me. It's also like over mountainous terrain as well. So right. that just adds another factor that's a little sketchy at night. Glad I brought my raincoat. Oh, I remember this place. Last time we were here, we were asking for hangar space for the helicopter. Oh my God. So we are in Lonesome Pine Airport in Wise, Virginia. We are surrounded by thunderstorms. <laughs> so silly. Those upon traffic helicopter, November 300, Whiskey Zoo, left base for final, 06, full stop, what's a pine. Wow, never thought we'd be back here. Welcome to Virginia. Okay, so this is the first test to see how efficiently we packed. Do you think we're gonna have to somehow break out of this airport? Yeah, you're probably gonna have to call and get a code for the gate. Is this Joe by any chance? No way. <laughs> Not that you would remember, but we flew in in 2018. Yeah, the Robinson helicopter, yeah. How'd you know it was us? <laughs> well, once you said that, it just, it kind of clicked. So I, I hate to make you guys wait, but I can be up there and probably 20 minutes or so. See you soon, Joe. Something that's really cool about all these little tiny airports is that a lot of them have crew cars that the airport owns and they'll just lend it to people. The perks of general aviation. You have this network of airports of 
all different sizes. It's just kind of a real fun part of the adventure. You just never know what you're gonna get. Like, ooh, what's this airport gonna be like? And also like, where is the airport located? Like, what town is this? Like, why is Virginia? I would never in a million years have had any reason to go to Wise, Virginia. But now we're gonna get to experience this little town. It's just part of the fun of the trip. It keeps it interesting. But I just saw some headlights, so I think Joe is here actually. Oh, long time no see, man. Right there's the courtesy vehicle. We got rid of the old Jeep. <laughs> oh, you got rid of the old yeah. Jeep? Well, why don't we fuel up tonight then, and then okay. that way you don't have to come in on Saturday, Sunday morning. We'll go uh, get the keys for the courtesy vehicle. I'll pull it up right here. We'll get you fueled up. Not a bad first day, actually. You know what? I think it was a good first day. Joe was nice enough to come in after hours. I really feel bad about that, but it's also close tomorrow. Maybe it's better that we get fuel now and then we can just leave maybe tomorrow. I'm really happy to be here and happy to start the trip. It's really exciting. All the stress is out well. There's lots of stress coming up, but all of my stress is over with. <laughs> <laughs> Hanging out on a Saturday in Lowson Pine. Hanging out with airport manager Joe. Joe got a promotion last year. He's now the airport manager. I actually just thought he was the airport manager before because he was so helpful the first time we came through, but. <laughs> Shall we mosey on to our hotel? Like oh, a, that's it in the corner right there. Like Cute. All right, we made it. <laughs> like a king size bed. I was fully expecting two double beds tonight. Yeah. I was also expecting not to be in Wise, Virginia. So it's really special to both be here again, to get a hotel room on the first try, and to get to sleep in a king bed. It's not looking promising today. There's conflicting weather forecasts. One reality where the ceiling lifts a little bit during around noon, but I'm not hopeful. I don't think that's really gonna happen. But if we don't get out today, tomorrow's supposed to be all IFR, low IFR. We really don't know how this day's gonna unfold for the trip, really. <laughs> It's not looking too hopeful. The problem is, is the ceiling is low and we're in the mountains. You can get into a pretty hairy situation where you're, you know, scud running through a valley. The mountains on either side of you are in the clouds. That's how you get into problems. I think that even though we're gonna burn two days, we should probably just stay put. I'm gonna call the front desk and see if we can just extend the stay. Just wondering if there's any way we can extend our stay till Tuesday. Last name Nicholas. I don't even know what room we're in. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, fantastic. Thank you very much. Success. Well, despite the weather not really working out, the hotel worked out pretty great. While we're waiting for the weather to clear, let's give you a crash course on airspace categories and the airports found within. Let's start big with Class Bravo. Class Bravo airspace is the busiest in the country and naturally has the biggest airports. There are about 37 of these major airports in the USA, examples being LAX, Atlanta, and Denver International. Class Charlie is a step down in size and includes smaller regional airports. There's about 120 in this category and Buffalo International is an example. One size down from that is Class Delta, which includes some of the smallest airports in controlled airspace. There are about 480 airports in the USA in this category. And then there's almost 9,000 private airports and over 5,200 public airports that are in the non-tower category, meaning they don't have a control tower. Lonesome Pine Airport would be a perfect example of a non-towered airport. Even though we made the decision to stay put in Wise, Virginia, we decided to go for a drive to assess just how bad the visibility actually was. We followed some winding roads that led us to High Knob Observation Tower, which sits at an elevation of 4,223 feet. Apparently the original lookout burned down from arson. So they rebuilt this as a fireproof structure, which is literally just concrete, stone, and metal by the looks of it. Well, we made it to High Knob Lookout, and as you can see, there is low IFR condition. So we never got our window, so we were never making out of this. So I don't want to say we're stuck in Wise, Virginia. It kind of has a negative connotation, but if you kind of embrace how random some of these trips are, we would never be here checking this out and even though we can't really see much driving up the winding roads to get here what's very scenic we're going through this like magical forest with fog forcing us to slow down and kind of appreciate where we are i'm having a great time it's the trip isn't what we expected but it never is but being okay with that that's something that you kind of have to learn about with general aviation
day three here in Wise, Virginia. Checking the weather this morning is still not looking so great. We're socked in with fog here currently, so the ceiling is too low for us to fly out today. We might luck into a window this evening. So right now it's 1.30 in the afternoon. We are gonna go try to find some food. The problem here is that it's Memorial Day weekend. There's this like barbecue catfish place that has really great reviews on Google. So we're gonna go check it out, see if it's open, see if we can uh, sneak our way into getting some catfish today. Oh my God, they're open. <laughs> Wicked. <laughs> what are you gonna get? Catfish. You're gonna get a one piece catfish dinner? Yeah. Is it like fish and chips? Yeah, but it's catfish. But it's catfish. Fish sand dinner. What sand dinner? Sandwich. 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 Not sand. <laughs> okay, the first one we'll get mac and cheese. No, no, I'm hopeful. They had a 4.9 stars out of 5 on Google. We met a lovely gentleman who just said this is the best catfish ever. And he came from Georgia too, so I don't know. That that that, that sounds like it has some, some credence to it. How do I eat it with like tartar sauce? Oh yeah, that's really good. good. It gives two thumbs up. It's so fresh. Describe to me. Dog. It's really good. It's like light batter, yeah. peppery. Like, yeah, it's really good. The reviews on Google did not lie. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Very rich. Mm -hmm. Yum. So we've been here in Wise, Virginia for two full days and the weather has just not lifted so far. Our itinerary has changed three or four times and we're just basically trying to figure out where we should go next. I'm using Milanote to help me wrap my head around this entire trip. So I basically created this visual trip route and I find this really easy to look at because it is more visual. It's not just a bunch of points on a map or a bunch of text. We've got boards, columns, color schemes, different type hierarchy. And that's how I like to process my information. So for trips like this, it's really important that we take a lot of time upfront to figure out where we wanna go, what we wanna see, and then make sure we compile all the information into these boards. So yeah, our decision right now we need to make is tomorrow when we depart Lonesome Pine Airport here in Wise, Virginia, do we wanna go straight to Atlanta and then go to Chattanooga, spend a little bit of time there and then continue on? Or do we wanna to go to Chattanooga first? It would make more sense to go to Atlanta first and not backtrack. It's going over the mountains weather might be more of an issue. I'm kind of on the tip where we go to Atlanta first. I have taken screenshots of all your recommendations from Instagram on places to stay, places to see, places to eat. So all of those are in there for quick reference. I love the boards like that because I can keep everything super organized. After that, we're going to go to Missouri to get an oil change. And then from there, we're gonna head on to Texas. Milanote is like basically my virtual assistant. It's my brain. Couldn't do any of this stuff without Milanote. So with that being said, I think that it's probably a good time to pack up our stuff. The weather's looking really good for tomorrow morning. There is a, a small possibility that we might be able to scoot out this evening. Right. All right, let's get packed up. With a stroke of luck, the clouds cleared around Lonesome Pine and the mountain weather forecasted VFR conditions for the entire night. Taking full advantage, we packed up and prepared to depart. Welcome back to another edition of the airport tour. We are at Lonesome Pines Airport, Kilo, Lima, November, Papa. This, this airport, is one of my favorites. When we bought the Millennial Falcon and we flew it back to Buffalo, we stopped at this very airport and had such a good experience. We have a single runway, a beautiful FBO, including a bathroom with toilet paper, hot beverages, a complimentary crew car, snacks, and candy. Pretty good fuel prices, and it's all full service. We have an excellent airport manager, Joe, who is best kind. Big, big thumbs up. Can't say enough good things. All right, let's go. All of my traffic helicopter, remember 300 Whiskey Zulu departing from 06, opening a right cross with departure to the southwest. Well, it's fine. Oh, yeah, the ceiling's real low, eh? Yeah, well, we're going this way. Wow, look at the God rays. Wow. Beautiful. That mountain obscuration out to the, the left. What an evening, man. Beautiful. I think this is the, low, the lookout. Oh. Yeah, there's a road right there. Now this makes me feel better. <laughs> Just had to get out of Lonesome Pine, man. Look at this rolling countryside here. We finally got out of Lonesome Pine and we're on route to Atlanta, which is the busiest airport in the entire world, which kind of blows my mind. Helicopter 300 Whiskey Zulu Windy Center, Squawk 4005, Nidin. 4005, we're 25 miles now southwest of Lonesome Pine, uh, Kilo, Lima, November Papa, request a flight following to Atlanta. Zero, right. zero, whiskey, zero, roger that. Radar contact, maintain VFR, altitude is your discretion. 
Well, Atlanta is the busiest airport in the world. It is not the largest airport. It's actually not even on the top 10 list of largest airports in the world. Strictly busiest by number of passengers. Was it like 93 million or something crazy like that? I've never actually been to Atlanta and stayed. We're going from a class Gulf and now we're going to be going into a class B. So Bravo airspace is the busiest airspace in the U.S. As you would expect for the busiest airport in the U.S. Yeah, we like to say B for big boys. We're going to be flying with the big boys tonight, but not only just flying with the big boys tonight, we're going to be flying in after dark. I'm going to see if they're going to let us do a flyover over midfield. You never heard to ask. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Before we get in there, there's a gauntlet of at least three class Delta airports. It's like a game of Plinko. So we're going to go through three different class Delta airspaces, then into class Bravo. Yeah, I've never done this before, so we'll see how it goes. Two eight zero at Niner. Atlanta Center helicopter November three zero zero Whiskey Zulu. Helicopter three zero zero Whiskey Zulu Atlanta for this good evening Atlanta altimeter two nine nine three. Two nine nine three zero Whiskey Zulu. So we're at four thousand feet. So we're flying above the ping pong ball delta that we were talking about before. There's like at least three class Delta airports all diagonal from one another leading into Atlanta. Instead of like cutting through their zone, we're just gonna fly above. We're gonna stay on the Atlanta approach, take it direct in. And at some point he's gonna transfer us over to tower. He'll uh, give us our final instructions on how to get into the FBO, which is on the north side of the airport as per the diagram. Look at the traffic right there. But I also kind of want to ask them to see if we can fly over midfield. Look at all the targets in the sky. Yeah, wow. Well. Robinson 300 with Kizula device, Adis, Lima, and Hartsfield. Uh, with Lima, zero whiskey zero. <laughs> Literally going right over downtown Atlanta. Holy moly. Easy. Three zero zero whiskey zero contact. Atlanta Tower one 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 hundred point one. One one hundred point one zero whiskey zero. Atlanta Tower helicopter November three zero zero whiskey Zulu with Lima. Helicopter zero whiskey Zulu Atlanta Tower Roger. Three zero zero whiskey Zulu. We're bound for Signature Flight Services. If you're able, can we do a flight over midfield for a scenic photo flight? Helicopter zero whiskey Zulu. Clear the cost for race straight from the north. Stand by for zero request, please. Roger that, zero with Zulu. 682, can I depart today now? Our departure, I'll take you up, great night. Helicopter zero with Zulu, I can approve that at 3,000. Will that work for you, yes or no? Yes. Helicopter zero with Zulu, ready to maintain VFR at uh, 3,000. So fly towards the tower, and, I'll, and just remain north of runway 26 right. North of 26 right, zero with Zulu. Delta 721, tower wind 290011, runway 26 right, clear to land. Tower Delta 721, AJ inbound. Delta 721, Tower Wind 290011, runway 26 right, clear to land. Clear to land, 26 like right, Delta 721. The airplane's taking off one after another after Delta another. 20, helicopter zero with Zulu. How far south did you want to go as you fly, overfly the airport? We just wanted to overfly the runways down and back. Okay, just for now, maintain VFR 3000 north of 26 right. Let me coordinate this real quick. Average yeah, that 3000, we'll stay north of 26. Southwest 168, turn with 26 left, final point. Final point, 26 left, southwest 168. Delta 954, taxi via the Victor Loop. Victor Loop, Delta 954. Out of 2638, AJ26 right. Delta 2638, tower wind 2 0 runway 26 right, clear to land. 26 right, clear to land, Delta 2738. Delta 2701, tower wind 26 left, final point. Final way 26 left, Delta 2701. Helicopter 0 with you, you can overfly runway 26 right at 3000, just maintain 3000, should begin your turn back to the north, and uh, just let me know when you begin your turn back to the north. All right, we'll overfly 26 right, and uh, we'll let you know when the turn out to the north, 0 with you. Is this the airport? Southwest 168, yes. can I the These are the runways, these are the runways. Southwest 168. <laughs> Look at this. Insane. <laughs> uh, wow. There's probably very few people who have done this. Look at this plane coming in parallel landings here. 329 tower wind 300 at 1-1, runway 26 right. That one's taking off and that one's landing. Runway 26 right, Delta 2329. <laughs> oh, crazy. Oh, look at this, look at this, look at this. This guy's taking off right below me. Helicopter zero with Zulu. Once you begin your turn back north, just make a left hand turn, please. All right, so we're going to be turning our turn back now, and we can make a left hand turn. Zero with Zulu. Helicopter zero with Zulu. As you begin to turn back to the north, so you see traffic on a two mile funnel is a Boeing 757 descending at a 2000. And I'm with the traffic zero with Zulu. And maintain visual separation for the uh, 75, and you can begin your BFR descent at your discretion. 
Be heard center. Discretion zero, whiskey's with. You said your landing signature, correct? A affirmative. Roger, and the landing will be on Rusk. The wind is 30011, altimeter is 2903. 2903, whiskey's with. American Maintenance 300 at Charlie, cross runway 26 right. Crossing 26 right at Charlie, American Maintenance 300. Southwest Maintenance 731 at Charlie, cross runway 26 right. At Charlie, cross 26 right, 7831, have a good night. American Minister 300, as you enter the ramp, you'll see a helicopter that will be landing uh, on the east side of the uh, signature ramp. Just use caution. We'll use caution. Helicopter on the east side. American Minister 300. Helicopter 0 with will be one coming in that ramp at an American. They're just crossing 2-6 right. They're going to come in Alpha 5. That's either traffic 0 with We're just taxiing like with them. taxiing with them. That's insane. <laughs> I cannot believe we just did that. <laughs> I was not expecting that. I thought he would be like, can't accommodate. All right, there's nobody out here, so I'm just going to park right here. Richard Whiskey was down and clear. Thanks again for that. It was once a lifetime experience. Dude, that was sick. Great job. <laughs> wow, that was in so the <laughs> 3,000 feet above the most, the busiest airport in the world? <laughs> so sick, dude. <laughs> so sick. <laughs> and we are two hours and 23 minutes en route. Not bad. Oh man, that flight was probably one of the most scenic flights we've ever been on. Just going over like the valleys with the like tufted, almost like grassy hills with the mountains on either side and then flying over the actual mountains when the sun was low and it was just starting to set. And then coming out of that, going into actual Atlanta at night, flying over the city. The cherry on top was flying into actual Atlanta International Airport and you, there's literally jets landing and taking off below us. Amazing flight. The total flight time was about two and a half hours. There's just so many different parts of it that were special in their own ways. It's around 11 o'clock at night, so we're just gonna grab a bite to eat because we're actually starving. The only things we have to do tomorrow is fly to Chattanooga, which is one hour, and then fly to Missouri for the oil change. That's another two hours. Good All night. Right. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night. We are back at the Atlanta airport getting ready to take off towards Chattanooga, which is our next stop. You might recognize Atlanta airport as the big airport where you go and you purchase a ticket to get on a plane, you go through security, you wait at the boarding gate, board the plane, sit in a number, and then off you go. Where we land is on the opposite side of the airport at something called an FBO or a fixed base operator and they basically handle all the general aviation traffic like ourselves small planes things like that this here is the fbo signature that's where we landed and this is a big fancy airport so this is a very nice fbo with a lot of amenities and over here is the atlanta international airport so that's where all your commercial flights are going to go and there's just planes constantly coming in and taking off there's actually one landing right now since this is a class bravo airspace it's super busy and usually with the higher class airports, you're gonna get nicer FBOs with a lot more amenities. So this FBO here had a crew car come pick us up this morning at the hotel. They also had a shuttle service that dropped us off at the hotel last night. They have snacks in there. They have a really nice looking interior with lots of big comfortable chairs. They have uh, full service fuel as well. So as we kind of work our way through the different classes of airspace into different FBOs, we're gonna see a lot of different infrastructure. Just constant stream of air traffic. I mean, we're literally the busiest airport in the world. So what do we expect? Signature is sort of like a franchise of FBOs. So we actually have a signature at our home airport, Buffalo International. Now that is a class Charlie airport, so it's one notch below this. Signature, they really kind of stick to the big boys. The prices across the board of these big airports are gonna be a lot more. Lonesome Pine Airport, we just paid about $5 and change per gallon of fuel, and that was the only charge we got. Whereas here, it's $7.05 a gallon, so it's $2 a gallon more, plus $30 infrastructure fee, a $74 handling fee, which got waived with at least 25 gallons of fuel purchase. Then there's a $2.59 landing fee that goes to actual the Atlanta airport. And then there's an overnight $92 ramp fee. So if we spent three nights here, that'd be $92 times three. So with general aviation, if you don't actually need to fly into a big airport like this, it's actually more advantageous to fly into a smaller airport we probably get more bang for your buck. And it's a lot less daunting flying into an airport that's kind of out in the periphery and not, you know, the busiest airport in the world.
We are leaving at Class Bravo Airspace now, heading to Class Charlie. And it's pretty cool on this leg so far. We've hit everything from, you know, our little regional Buffalo Airfield, which is an untowered airport, Class Golf. You're, you're really getting all these uh, airspace categories down. Ba we basically went from a golf to a golf to a golf, all the way to Lonesome Pine, straight to a Bravo in Atlanta. We just passed a Delta off to our left. And now we're headed to a Charlie in Chattanooga. And then after that, we're gonna be landing at a Delta. So we're really getting every single class of airport on this like first leg of our flight, which is really cool. And then later on, we're gonna start doing some off airport landings, which will be pretty neat. Now, by all means, we did not have to fly into the class Bravo. I think that's a cool bucket list item to check off our list. I was talking to a fellow aviator at our home airfield. He was just like, why would you subject yourself to that? <laughs> it's it's one of those things where you can put yourself outside your comfort zone. And now you can say, oh, okay, I'm proud of that. I've, now I can say I've flown into the busiest airport in the world. So we have one more stop before our oil change at 50 hour inspection, which could completely change the trajectory of this trip. But we're not going to think about that. We're going to go ahead to Chattanooga, meet up with some friends. Chattanooga Tower Helicopter, November 300 Whiskey Zulu with Hotel. 300 Whiskey Zulu, Chattanooga Tower. Uh, where are you inbound to on the field? And we're bound for the FBO. I think it's uh, Wilson. As we arrived in Chattanooga, the impending inspection was on our minds. But we set that concern aside to focus on having fun with our friends at Exclusive, who also happen to run our online storefront. There we go. Look at that. Thank, Thank you so much. much. All right. So who's going in what? You can pick which one. Oh, I'm going in the convertible, Let's obviously. Do it. Okay. What year is this? This is a 74. Oh, I gotta watch the hat, too. Oh, yeah. So sick. <laughs> Welcome to Tennessee. Chad, what is this? Uh, that's a go-kart. You have go-karts here? Yes, we have go-karts. Can I ride those? I hope so. On your mark, get set, go! Merch. It's coming literally from, from this shelf to your doorstep. Right, what was the plan? What did we just say the plan was? Chicken. Chicken. Champies? Champies. You get the chicken tender basket tossed in sweet heat and you dip that in ranch. It's, it's blue cheese. Ah, blue cheese it has mold in it. No, I, like, I like the metal metalness to it. I enjoy it. You have ordered chicken tenders tossed in sweet heat sauce, which you dip in ranch because it's magical. And then the regular chicken tender in the champy sauce. Potato salad mm, on a bed of white bread. Wait, I gotta try the spicy one. It's not too hot, actually. No, it's Excellent. not super hot. Wait, <laughs> maybe it's a little bit hot. Stick the jaw out, you hold the marbles in your mouth. You play hey, very easily, you got one in your mouth, and you play shoot. Smoked you on the go kart. You literally ate my dust. Yeah, you're like, oh. all right, we got about a two and a half hour flight until Missouri, which is our next destination, where we will get our oil changed and our 50 hour inspection. And this will be the final inspection of this helicopter's current life. If it doesn't pass the inspection and we have to fix something that requires ordering a part, then this could potentially screw our entire trip. But in the meantime, let's go to Missouri. Is there rain? Thank you. 
Cape Girardeau traffic helicopter, November 300, Whiskey Zulu, 10 to the east inbound for Cape Copters. Cape Girardeau. Is that Paul? Sounded like it. Terminal C5, Charlie, Charlie, about to go, runway 20. Probably him and his gyrocopter. Paul, that you? Hey, hey, good gyro plane up around the pattern, two copters. <laughs> I figured it was you, uh, the experimental. <laughs> Paul, how fast are you going that thing? Uh, I think I'm going about 110. Oh wow, so you can keep up. Hey Rosette, I'm going to head out to the east, look for you here. He's actually going to tag along with us for the next iteration of our flight, hopefully all the way to Texas, we're hoping. Assuming that our oil change and inspection goes okay tonight. Look straight out your windshield. Uh, I'm with you. Okay, so I'm coming up on your left side. Smile for the camera. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's pretty funny. That's awesome. <laughs> if you want to, Chris, I'm just going to do a right base entry for runway two. If you want to follow me in, we'll head to the uh, Cape Copters ramp there. Cape Copters traffic helicopter, uh, drive out experimental 257, Charlie Charlie, right base, runway two. And we're looking for the aircraft on final for one zero. Oh my god, I'm freaked out that he's that close. Well, I'm going to come parallel to you when you're landing, okay? All right, yeah, you going to be on the right side or left side? I'll be on the right side. And it's all coming back to me here now. Just land behind the blue pickup truck there. Back to Cape Copters. I haven't been here in years. You guys must have a bunch of stuff in that helicopter. <laughs> oh, we're loaded to the brim. As we travel, we'll have the opportunity to witness firsthand the infrastructure and scale of various modern airports, each one playing a vital role in the world of aviation. But before we head en route across the country, we must overcome our first major hurdle, passing our 50-hour inspection and getting the helicopters oil changed. Yeah, so something to consider too is that signature, that's too loud. Who ever would have thought it would be hard to film in an airport? <laughs> Airspace in the world. $30 infrastructure fee. Jesus Christ. Delta. What do you think you own this place? <laughs> this is like the world headquarters of Delta. <laughs> How do you feel flying as a party of two today? It was fun. It's good to have friends along the way, you know. Dexter traffic helicopter, November 300, Whiskey Zulu, doing a direct south on departure from the ramp party of two, Dexter. What we need to get done is a 50 hour oil change and inspection. So every 50 hours, certain parts of the engine need to be inspected. If we don't pass that, then the whole trip is done.